<coughs> so I've made a line here. Now I'm going to take a piece of wood that I'm actually going to use for the floor, for that shelf. I'm assuming it's quarter inch. And I'm going to lay it on my line and actually scribe the thickness of it on there. That way, that's sort of my theory of marking pieces from the actual pieces of I'll take my Japanese saw and hold it against the fence, press it up against the fence. Try to keep it vertical. On the front. Get right down there. So then I'll hold this down and cut <coughs> until my tape gives me that depth. Like this. Yeah, but that doesn't matter because you're chiseling it out anyway. Yeah, the veneer saw works well if it's sharp. So then, turn it around, put it on the other side. See. Um, this just to square out that little front section where you can't reach no matter what you use even if you use a router you still have to you still want to square square out the end of this Go pretty fast, and then I'll take my starter plane, which is set for the depth of my molding. I set it on the front, and I use my fingers as a height adjustment, and I, I take it off the top, and I just shave it off the top, and I keep dropping the angle down until I got my full depth. But like up here, I'm tilting it up so it cuts shallow and then I'll let it cut deeper. If you try to cut the entire depth all at once, it's just not good. You just run it right inside your dados. And the nice thing is if your file is straight, and they're not all straight, but if your file is straight, it will take off any little bumps that might be in there. And it'll leave a nice smooth surface so your stuff will slide in nicely. You know. Just mark that. That. Like that. So that's the actual existing thickness. Not quite all the way to the bottom, but almost. That will give you give a place for the waste to go away. So I start from the middle and work my way out to the end. Left to right, and then I go back and forth. Like so. The inside distance, and then I checked it again as I went down, and I went back to my shooting board, and I just kissed the end of these with the shooting plane so that these guys would just fit just right. Yeah. Okay. Wiggle it. The thickness, of that, the thickness of that paper doesn't. Have any effect on, on well, I mean, yeah, it's thicker, but it'll still it'll still hit the high spots first. You know, yeah, it, 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 there is some thickness to it. It does make a difference, but that would give me a nice black little pink line there, mm -hmm. which is easier to see in certain light. <laughs> it also leaves a nice smooth finish.
Al, could you use a lead pencil and, uh, and yeah, you know, the inside of your, your sure. notch and then put that in sure. and mark the yeah. that with dovetails? No doubt about it. I can take that off, right? <laughs> Before anybody sees it. <laughs> I do this on a dado blade, so I'll just take this flat out because it's got two flats on each drawer, and then it, it curves out. Typical block drawer. So I'll take that right out. In the end, I'll I'll take a rabbit plane and clean off those machine marks, obviously. But this is how I start. A skew rabbit plane is only going to work on one side of this well because the grain's probably not dead flat. So if I use this one, the grain is running this way, so it's not going to like to be skew rabbit plane on this side because I'm going to be going against the grain from this side. It should work all right. Same. Having said that, I'm going to try it anyway. <laughs> it's working. Now, a lot of woodworking is theoretical, and practically speaking, the theory doesn't really doesn't come into it. Wow, you're really working up a store box. I got that John Townsend diamond box of hoops. <laughs> Here was, I drew on a line where my curve is going to start. Right? So it starts there. And as I said, I'm just making this up. There's, I'm going to pretend that I trace my pattern on right here. There's a pattern there. There's a curve there. Curve here. I never hear on Saturday, so I never get to hear this. I'll take a chisel and I'll go right to that curve immediately. Just make a bevel. <coughs> And that will give me a visual cue. So I'll take my big chisel and I'll just... I'll start to make that curve. You want to skew it or put a stop lock over here so you don't blow the edge of your drawer off. That's another reason why I bevel, because you don't have to worry about that until you get to the very end. So I'll do this. And just go across the grain. Chisel this bit down here. Did you say I use that big and You can take a 50. Again, making sure that you don't chew into your flat when you roll it over. So this is all. And you can get a pretty good service on this. Rock and roll woodworking. <laughs> so I'll take a nice sharp scraper and what you want to do when you do this is you, you're trying to push it down flat onto here. Don't necessarily even try to follow it. Just go over here and then push down. And scrape a little track down the curve. <coughs> Clean up that last little transition. And then you can actually use the file on the flat too.
I'm going to take a little file and just put a little bit of dirt. Kind of rough it out a little bit with a rasp. Save myself a little scraping. Just to take a little bit of the work out of it from the scraper. Take my little scraper. Scrape my front. Thank you.